And the Department of Justice says more than 860 people were charged in connection with the January 6th insurrection. 484 of them have pleaded guilty, and Derek Evans is one of them. We want to bring in from West Virginia former delegate Derek Evans. Derek, welcome to Capra Review. So two years ago, you live streamed storming into the Capitol yelling, I bet Trump would pardon anybody who gets arrested for going in there. But you were arrested. You were sentenced and charged to serve three months, and President Trump did not pardon you. Instead, police officers were brutally attacked. So what do you have to say for your actions? Was it worth it for you? Well, first, I want to say thank you guys for having me on the show today. And uh, I want to set the record straight that most of these comments have been taken out of context. Uh, when I said that was way earlier in the day, not as I was entering the, do the doors, uh, that, the open doors that I entered. And uh, I said that as I was repeating what someone else had said. I, I didn't say that on my own accord. And Derek, during your sentencing, you had also told the judge that you took responsibility for your actions. You said, I will forever bear the reminder that I made a crucial mistake. I let down myself, I let down my community, and most importantly, I've let down my family. And today you announced that you want to work in Congress on the same platform that you disrupted the Capitol for. Um, so was what you said to the judge and to your family, was that a lie? No, it was not. I mean, if, look, if we're looking for perfection, there's only one perfect man who's ever walked the face of this earth, and that's Jesus Christ himself. Uh, so, you know, people make mistakes on a regular basis. And quite frankly, uh, I would say that the majority of the people in Congress have, uh, have broken many laws, whether they've been uh, charged with those or not, um, and, um, you know, have, have made mistakes in their past as well. And at that time, two years ago, you were just sworn in as a West Virginia delegate. And, you know, instead of serving your constituents, you served time in prison at a f uh, federal correctional facility in Michigan. What did you do for the three months while you were there? Did you have time to reflect on what happened? You know, I, I had a good game plan on going into that situation. Never been in trouble with the law before. Uh, so I went in there with the mindset of I was going to use that opportunity to uh, read my Bible and get closer to God. And, uh, and to study the Constitution and then, and then use the opportunity to uh, bring the Word of God and to share with people uh, behind prison walls that otherwise I would never have the opportunity to witness to. So that's what I did on a, on a regular basis. And tell us about your run now. Why are you running for a position in the House of Representatives? Look, the people in Southern West Virginia, this is Trump country. Uh, it's one of the reddest districts in the nation. And uh, the people here are looking for a firebrand candidate, someone who's going to step up and have the, the courage and the backbone uh, to represent their interests on the national stage and not cave under pressure. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, you know, you were saying that you were also doing this because the election was stolen, but there were a number of prominent conservatives, like former senators John Danford and Gordon Smith, they actually looked into the claims of whether or not that even happened. They looked into a claim for about a year and they released a report saying loss not stolen the conservative case. So when you say you're defending democracy, what does that actually mean? From what? Well, first of all, I can also point out to, uh, to people who have said that the election was stolen. I think everyone's forgetting that the original election deniers uh, was Hillary Clinton and Stacey Abrams in 2016. So this is not just a conservative issue. This is not just a left issue. It's something that both sides agree on, that there are, um, you know, a lack of integrity within our election system right now. Uh, we need to come together on this issue. We need to secure our elections so that way in the future, moving forward, we can all accept those results and, and move forward from there. But the election wasn't stolen, though. I mean, there were no evidence that there was any election fraud. So can you expand that, that's on that? That's your opinion. Okay, and on this day now, this is the second anniversary of January 6th, um, where families have lost their loved ones. There were four officers who died by apparent suicide because of what they experienced, the trauma that they experienced during that insurrection. Do you have anything you'd like to say to those family members? Well, first of all, I mean, anytime there's a loss of life, it's, it's tragic, and uh, absolutely my heart goes out to anyone who uh, you know, lost a life that day, including uh, Matthew Perna, uh, who uh, unfortunately committed suicide uh, from this due to the uh, bullying from the mainstream media, calling people insurrectionists when it's simply not true. And so my heart goes out to everyone involved on both sides of that. All right, Derek Evans, thank you so much for being here and for being on Capra Review. We appreciate it. All right, thank you guys so much. Have a, have a great day. All right, we'll be right back. Stay with us. You're watching Capitol Review.